Basin's a precision contract machine shop. We service the oil and gas, uh, aerospace, recreational vehicle and hydraulic markets. We believe in large relationships and the, it's, it's beneficial on both sides. Uh, for the customer, why would you want to manage 20 suppliers if you could manage just one, right? Uh, on our side, how do you service 100 customers? It's hard enough to service 10. Uh, so we can do a more focused and intense service for our customers if we have fewer of them. Conversely, if they're larger customers, we can make acquisitions that make sense, that are impactful to our customers as well as ourselves. We expanded our Jefferson facility by about 22,500 square feet and the, the goal was to support our major hydraulic customer, Hydroforce, and in order to do that, um, we had to add some very uh, high-tech uh, automated equipment. So we brought in uh, five Anadrexes, two Palatex. The larger of the two FMSs is for hydraulic manifolds, and it's massive. It's, uh, again, I think pretty unique for Mazak to be able to supply the, the, the FMS in the configuration we wanted. And what we wanted was maximum tools. Uh, we wanted 120 pallets. So we added six HCN 5000s, so 500 millimeter horizontals, each with a 348 tool tool hive, uh, three load stations with the, uh, with the intent of manufacturing over 150 different SKUs, set up in the line once, and then never have to set them up again because they do rotate. You know, in a conventional machine shop, to do some of the product that we're making, you would need five or six operations you would need to cascade that part through multiple setups. And in every case, we're doing them in one setup, one complete setup. What we did last year is we did about $11 million worth of hydraulic manifolds on conventional equipment. It was an average of 15 horizontal machining centers uh, and, and an average of 32 people to make $11 million worth of hydraulic manifolds. On this Palatech, this year, we will make nine and a half million dollars worth of manifolds. We will do it on six machines with six people. This technology is for all shops. Um, everybody benefits from done in one. And we take parts that, if we ran them through the older section of our machine shop, they'd go through three machines at least, and we do them in one shot. By doing it that way, yeah, we have a slightly longer cycle time on an expensive machine. But that's not all we're doing, because our guys got time to walk around, run another machine, do quality tasks that he wouldn't normally have to do. It, it frees up manning, and I don't care if you're a five-man shop or a 500-man shop, the climate right now is such that it's hard to find people to run in your shop. So if you free up your talented people to do more, that's impactful in any size organization. The, the current climate where they call guys standing in front of a machine a button pusher, that button pusher is not, uh, not doing an easy job because he's getting more parts thrown at him, more complexity thrown at him. They're, they're actually, we refer to them as uh, micro plant managers because they're really, in, in our facility, we're single piece flow everywhere. So they take it from raw to finished to presenting it to the customer and they do it in some cases hundreds of times a day. It's a challenging, difficult job. So you need smart people to do it. When we acquired all of that equipment, we did equip every piece with a smart box. And we're really doing a few things with them to start that are, that are really impactful. First of which, uh, we're using them to communicate with our tool room. We intend to use them to monitor machine condition. So OEE on an overall level, but also to, to add some sensors to the equipment to be able to monitor vibration, heat, and so on so that we can get an actual TPM program that looks forward, that's predictive and not reactive. These kind of devices are the future for a machine shop. They're how you will be able to integrate with other systems. Everybody makes a good machine. Everybody makes a good machine. Everybody can fix the machine. The question is, is that machine going to be able to integrate with what comes down the road five years from now? Uh, is that machine easy for the operator to get their head around, understand and manipulate? Is that machine flexible? And are the features usable? Uh, or do you have to be, you know, a rocket scientist to use the features? And I think Mazak's ahead on a lot of those, those factors. 